This is the most important video I've produced yet. And from the outset, everybody needs to be clear about this. We are dealing with a crime. We're dealing with an actual crime, a serious crime, that so far, no criminal agency tasked to deal with it has done anything about. We have law enforcement within countries of this world. Them countries have law enforcement to deter, prevent and punish crime, punish criminality. So there's a consequence for wrongdoing. They aren't doing it. In the UK, we have the Serious Fraud Office. They are not punishing crime. They're not investigating crime. The UK government is guilty of crime and they're doing nothing. But this is a global fraud. And Colin here doesn't seem to understand. So I've drawn you a picture, Colin. OK, because you're supposed to be investigating and prosecuting serious and complex fraud. So here we go. Crime. What constitutes crime? I've circled the ones just so that you know. So we've got fraud over here. Here it is. Fraud. OK, that's that's called a crime. OK, and that is what has taken place in Abu Dhabi 2021. It's a crime. Link with that. Insider trading. OK. There will be people who knew what that result was likely to be and therefore would have placed their bets in a certain way and profited hugely from it. That's called insider trading. OK, bribery. Bribery. Who got paid? Who got paid to do what they did? Because it couldn't be the acts of just Michael Massey that produced it. To produce what happened, we had F1 TV. Who's that owned by? They produced the narrative. They put together, pieced together the footage of what took place. We had Sky Sports F1 lying about the rules of the sport and hyping it up to tell everybody we were going to see this exciting last lap. We had Michael Massey break the rules of the sport, along with the other 10 people at least in race control who just let him do it. They just let him do it. Nobody said anything. Yeah, yeah, that's fine, Michael. You carry on doing that. And I'm going to show you 52 pieces of evidence why all 10 of them know it was wrong. All 10 know it was wrong. It's not just a human error. And then we've got the four stewards that could have reversed it and didn't. And they knew the rules of the sport. They know the implications of the sport. They've lived it. And then we've got Sky Sports producing programmes to validate it. And then we've got the rest of the world's media parroting the narrative rather than exposing what I'm going to expose in this presentation today. What's going on? Who's paying who? We look down the bottom. Robbery. Yes, a man was robbed of his valid accomplishment. Robbed of becoming an eight-time world champion. The first person in history to accomplish that feat that was robbed from him that was taken from him in addition to that the additional earnings that somebody gets from such an accomplishment the extra bonuship bonuses from sponsorship the extra sponsorship that can amount to millions instead of that we get the fake manufactured champion that gets a annual salary increase as a result of now being a fake champion What's the swing in monetary value of that? Harassment and assault. Everybody that has stood up and said this is fixed has been subjected to abuse. Has been subjected to abuse, to hatred, to harassment online from wankers that, are, that actually delight in what has been gifted to them. The FIA have overseen that. Sky Sports have overseen that. The sport of Formula One has overseen it. They perpetrated it. They created the conflict. And they watched it burn. And they did it for clicks. 
because the more clicks, the more advertising revenue, and everybody makes money. Everybody makes money. Everybody makes money. And they don't care a shit about the impact it's had on people. That's a crime. As for drug dealing, selling crack to the kids, lying to condition the minds of people, to condition the attitudes of people with absolute lies. That is far more damaging than you will ever know. But now I'm going to get into this. 52 pieces of evidence against Massey. 52 pieces of evidence against the FIA race control, which consists of 10 or more people. At least 15 pieces of evidence against the FIA race stewards. And 199 pieces of evidence against Red Bull. So we're led to believe that Michael Massey, the scapegoat for all this, he just made a human error under pressure. He was new to the job. He was inexperienced. Um, he just had team bosses on the radio telling him he shouldn't put out a safety car uh, when Giovinazzi's car um, broke down and Toto getting on the radio to, to tell him that was totally unacceptable. This is what we were told about Michael Massey. The truth is, Michael Massey operates in FIA race control, which looks like this. There are at least 10 generally men in this room, all with data screens ahead of them, all knowledgeable, all with experience, all know what it is that they are there doing. Many of these people, you can take these photos from five, ten years ago, you will see the same faces. You can find out the level of experience that each of these people has. You can understand that they're not novices. They all know what goes on. And you will see with the 52 pieces of evidence, you don't make mistakes like this. This is another picture of FIA race control. Count the number of people in the room. This is only a partial shot. Only a partial shot. This is what FIA race control looks like. It's not just one man getting phone calls, being put under pressure. This is FIA race control, directing operations. And this is a typical scene from what the four stewards are doing. This is separate to FIA race control. These are four people adjudicating on what is right and what is wrong. And some of these people have been working for the FIA since the 1980s. And I will evidence that and what they've witnessed, and what they know. So, in 2012, for the 2012 season, the present safety car rules, in terms of releasing lapped cars, were adopted. They've been slightly modified, but fundamentally those rules have been the same since 2012, the Australian Grand Prix, Okay, the start of the 2012 season. Between the Australian Grand Prix in 2012 and Abu Dhabi, there have been 10 full seasons. Abu Dhabi completing the 10th season. Abu Dhabi was the 199th Grand Prix since the unlapping of lapped cars was reintroduced. This is the regulations for that 2012 season. Look at the date on the page. 7th of December 2011, ahead of the 2012 season. In purple, the wording, if the clerk of the course considers it safe to do so, and the message, lapped cars may now overtake, is shown on the timing monitors. Any cars that have been lapped by the leader will be required to pass the cars on the lead lap and the safety car. This will only happen to cars that were lapped at the time they crossed the line at the end of the lap during which they crossed the first safety car line for the second time after the safety car was deployed. Having overtaken the cars on the lead lap and the safety car, these cars should then proceed around the track at an appropriate speed without overtaking. Now back in 2011 for the 2012 season, they stated this. 
and take up position at the back of the line of cars behind the safety car. That is the fundamental purpose of doing this. Now, this has been modified in the wording of the regulations, but ultimately the fundamental purpose is for them to ideally take up position of, at the back of the line of cars behind the safety car. Why is that? It is sporting fairness. When a race has to be halted, which it is, it is nullified at the point of a safety incident. It is neutralised. So when that happens, it is neutralised for every competitor. In order for it to restart, then that must be reset for every competitor. Now it takes time. They realised it takes time. And rather than have it take so much time out of a Grand Prix, they actually modified the regulations. But fundamentally, that is still the purpose of this regulation. So, since 2012, there have been 199 Grand Prix. I've put one as an asterisk. One of them was a parade, Belgium 2021. Max Verstappen was gifted that. No racing took place. That cannot be described as a race. During them times, during 199 Grand Prix, there were 147 safety car deployments. Abu Dhabi was the 148th safety car deployment. Rather a lot. At least 10 FIA personnel are in race control. They witness each and every one of the safety car deployments. If you get a job in FIA race control, you'd expect that they understand motorsport. They understand motor racing. You'd expect that they were trained to understand what it is that they're looking at on those screens. This is what the regulations um, were amended to. OK, so this was I believe it was for the 2015 season. I can't find the version of the regulations which actually state that. But this is what they say in the 2016 edition. And I've highlighted. So. If the clerk of the course considers it safe to do so and the message lapped cars may now overtake has been sent to all teams via the official messaging system, any cars that have been lapped by the leader will be required to pass the cars on the lead lap and the safety car. This will only happen to cars that were lapped at the time they crossed the line. At, well, we've not read that bit. OK. Coming down to the green section highlighted, instead of taking up position at the back of the line of traffic, it was amended to this. Once the last lapped car has passed the leader, uh, the leader, the safety car, sorry, once the last lapped car has passed the leader, the safety car will return to the pits at the end of the following lap. So what that has done that has put in the stipulation that once end cars have been released, they will be given one full lap of the track performed by the safety car and the rest of the cars held behind the safety car with which to be given that time to catch the back of the safety car snake. The race director can call or the clerk of the course can call the safety car in at that point and resume racing because they've been given the chance. However, it is still within the discretion of the race director or the clerk of the course to decide whether or not they still pull the safety car in after that procedure has been carried out. That is their discretion. And I will show you in the evidence what they've done and why they've done it. Nobody has ever re revealed this. No form of media has ever revealed this. Why not? So, this one, again, this is the regulations that were in play in the 2021 Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. This is on the 8th of December 2021, issue 13 of the regulations, 48.12. You've seen these before. Any cars that have been lapped by the leader will be required to pass the cars on the lead lap and the safety car. In green. 
Once the last lapped car has passed the leader, the safety car will return to the pits at the end of the following lap. There is something I've highlighted in yellow there. It says, if the clerk of the course considers track conditions are unsuitable for overtaking, the message overtaking will not be permitted, will be sent to all competitors via the official messaging system. In Abu Dhabi, this message flashed up. Lapped cars will not be allowed to overtake. Overtaking will not be permitted. Lapped cars will not be allowed to overtake. Overtaking will not be permitted. Is that an official message? Is that one the official message? Or is that one stated in the regulations the official message? Because overtaking will not be permitted applies to every competitor, every car in that race. Lapped cars will not be allowed to overtake. Well, that is not even in the regulations. That's not even a regulation at all. That is not in the rules. That is the first time we even saw that notification in Abu Dhabi 2021. The FIA, in their, uh, in their report that they took three months to do to tell us what went wrong there, they tell us at 18, 27 and 55 seconds local time, with the race on lap 56 and 58 and the safety car still on track, as there was still significant debris being cleared by marshals on the track. So they tell us that. The standard message, this, that this standard message, overtaken will not be permitted, not lapped cars will not be added. The standard message lapped cars will not be allowed to overtake, was published, which led to confusion amongst the teams as they were preparing for the unlapping procedure. Thank you, FIA. Thank you for that lie. Thank you for that lie. Because the standard message, which is not a standard message, was published and it led to confusion amongst the teams as they were preparing for the unlapping procedure. Just you wait until I analyse this uh, FIA report into the situation. <laughs> Not a single word of it is true. Check out the FIA website. Race against manipulation. And they tell us education. They tell us education. They highlight online abuse. This is what they tell us they are doing. They're educating. They've told us exactly how they're going to educate us to ensure that we don't fall into the trap of accepting manipulation and race fixing. The FIA are going to do that. They're going to educate us. They're going to tell us what the real rules of the sport are, why they are what they are, because they've done that, haven't they? They've got Sky Sports F1 at their disposal. They can tell you what the rules of the sport are, quite simply. When have you heard them? This is more gaslighting. Absolute gaslighting and lies from the governing body of the sport. Ten full seasons, 199 Grand Prix held under the unlapping regulations, 148 safety car deployments, 49 of which required the unlapping of lapped cars. Here they are, look. Here they are. All the seasons. Now, the number that you see in brackets after each Grand Prix is the number of laps that were awarded or given by the race director for after, this is after the lap on which those cars were released for those cars to catch the back of the pack. So it started the first one with the new regulations was Australia. Then it was a European Grand Prix. They only gave one lap. But then they realise these cars that have been released are being left adrift of the pack. When the safety car was deployed, the car initially held back behind the lead car may have only been a few seconds behind the car that wasn't held back by the safety car. That car has made it all the way around to the back of the pack. If you then release the cars that the leader has just overtaken, and don't give them the chance to pack, catch up, 
they might be left 30 seconds behind the car that they were previously only a few seconds behind. That has disadvantaged them. You can't do that. So Charlie Whiting then made sure he allowed the cars to catch the back of the safety car snake. In Singapore 2012, he gave them two laps. In Brazil 2012, he gave them two laps. Brazil 2012 was a safety car finish. It decided the world championship. There was no demand for a racing finish. There was no manipulation going on back then. Not in terms of breaking the rules of the sport anyway. 2013, Monaco Grand Prix, three laps beyond the lap that cars were released on, was when racing resumed. That enabled those released cars to make it around to the back of the pack. Germany, 2013, two laps beyond the lap that they were released on to get away all the way around to the back of the pack. Singapore, two laps. Korea, two laps. We're into 2014. Bahrain, two laps. Monaco, two laps. Canada was a safety car finish. This is the second safety car finish during this 10-year period. They happen. Singapore, two laps. Tragically, we come to Japan 2014. That race was red flagged. Never restarted. It was red flagged because a driver essentially lost his life at that event. Jules Bianchi... His car went off track and hit a crane that was recovering another car. Sustained head injuries and sadly never recovered. When they realised the damage that had been done, they red flagged the race and it certainly would not have been appropriate to restart that race. At that situation in time, there were lapped cars. They were lapping under the safety car initially. And it would have required the unlapping of lapped cars, but the race was stopped, validly so. We then move into 2015. The regulations were amended from ensuring these cars were allowed to make it around. They tried to speed the process up by saying that the safety car will return to the pits at the end of the following lap. So this time... The mandatory procedure is only one lap of the safety car that they get with which to try to catch the back of the pack. So in 2015, we see the Chinese Grand Prix, which was another safety car finish. Monaco, Hungary, Singapore. There was a second deployment at Singapore. Then the order was given for a car that was lapped to unlap. And what actually happened, it didn't. That's not them breaking the rules. Okay, it didn't unlap, but it was told to and didn't. And then eventually race control said, well, we've given you the chance. You've not taken it. We're going to crack on with racing. So that's an anomaly that I've highlighted with the two asterisks. USA, Mexico. These are the events that all of FIA race control have witnessed and all know what the procedure is. We move into 2016. Australian Grand Prix it was red flagged and then restarted. Prior to being restarted, the lapped cars were released. They were sent around the track first to, to form the correct race order. So that then the race resumed in the correct race order. China 2016, Austria 2016, Belgium. Belgium 2016, they were lapping behind the safety car. Kimi Raikkonen was released and then they red flagged the race because they realised it was going to take too long, too long to actually repair the barriers properly. So it was red flagged, but having had Raikkonen released and having had Raikkonen then eventually catch the back of the pack, the race was restarted with them competitors in the correct order, all on the same lap. Brazil 2016, the competitors were given either two or three laps with which to catch the back of the pack. 
It was in the rain and they were given two or three laps. The exact number of laps is difficult for me to work out from the footage that is shown on F1 TV. But it's one of the two. It's definitely two, possibly three laps. We move into 2017. Monaco, Azerbaijan, Belgium. This time at Singapore, there is a car which isn't allowed to unlap. And that is Pascal Verling. The man is two laps behind everybody. So even given permission to unlap, he's still a lap behind every competitor. So just unlapping him one lap still puts him last and an entire lap behind everybody. So a decision was made by the race director to say we are not going to take any more time out of this race for that purpose. That is a valid application of 15.3. An additional factor there was of the two laps that he was lapped, he actually became unlapped of one of those laps by the leader at the point in time where the leaders pitted. But then the lap later, he went into the pits, becoming lapped again. And when you apply the rules of being those being allowed to be unlapped are the ones where they are in the, the right state to do so after two after crossing the safety car line tw twice. I'm pretty certain, again, without the right data, because what you see on F1 TV is limited, but due to that, it would strike me that that application of the rules is why he wasn't allowed to be released as well. So the combination of the two factors meant that what they did on that restart was move him clearly out of the way. And you can see on the restart, he moves out to one side and every single competitor just streams by him and he takes up position at the back of the field of competitors. So you can see that at Singapore 2017. That's an anomaly, but it falls within the scope of the rules and the race director's discretion based on the circumstances at that time. It did not impact the races of all of the competitors in that race. 2018. Look at what we see in 2018. This is Michael Massey's apprenticeship year under, Mike, under Charlie Whiting. This is when he was deputy race director. He witnessed. He was party two. He was in race control whilst there was this unlapping procedure at the Australian Grand Prix, the Chinese Grand Prix. The Azerbaijan Grand Prix, whereby, there's a number five there. The order was given to unlap lapped cars. And one of those lapped cars, or actually, I don't know if it was a lapped car or not. One of the cars, I think it was Roman Grosjean, was warming his tyres up and crashed. Causing a further incident during the safety car period, which took another five laps to then resolve. The Great British Grand Prix. Germany, 2018. Massey, Deputy race, race Director, learning from Charlie Whiting. Two laps of the safety car are completed beyond the lap of release, with which to give the lapped cars enough time to make it fully round to the back of the pack. Why has he done that? I can't prove this because there is no track of you. What will be proved to you now is track of you and it will prove to you why he did what he did and who knows why he did what he did. We then move into Michael Massey's tenure as race director. Five deployments in 2019 which required the unlapping of lapped cars. Spain 2019, where he kept that safety car out for two laps beyond the lap that the cars were released on in order to restore sporting fairness to all competitors. Germany 2019, Singapore 2019, Russia 2019, Brazil 2019, where again he kept the safety car lapping for two laps beyond the lap that lapped cars were released on. 2020, Austria, Tuscan. The Eiffel Grand Prix. The Tuscan Grand Prix was a restart. I'm sure it was. 
I believe that was uh, red flagged. And I don't think I've put that on there. I believe it was red flagged. And then the cars were released prior to restarting. I'll have to double check that information. The Eiffel Grand Prix. The Eiffel Grand Prix was um, where the competitors were given two laps of the track after release with which to make it round to the back of the pack. Amelia Romagna, Sakia 2020. Another event where the release cars were given two laps to make it around to the back of the pack before racing resumed. 2021, Amelia Romagna. The race was red flagged. This was Imola. This was the race where Lewis Hamilton sustained the damage after spinning out, trying to overtake lapped cars and went onto the wet track, span, damaged his nose cone, made it around the track, went into the pits. Max Verstappen went by in the lead of the race whilst Hamilton was pitting, but at a similar time, George Russell and Valtteri Bottas crashed, causing a red flag situation. Okay? Now, because of that, what happened was all of the cars that had been lapped at that stage got released prior to the restart, so they were all sent around the track, the correct race order was restored, and then they all went racing again with all of the cars on the lead lap. Azerbaijan was a safety car situation where they released lap cars. Then, later in the race, was the safety car situation, which started as a safety car situation when Max Verstappen crashed because of a tyre blowout, which they then red flagged. And prior to restarting that race, they released Nikita Mazepin, who had been lapped. They sent him around the track with which to catch the back of the pack to make sure that all cars were in the correct race order, ready to resume the race. And then we see Abu Dhabi, where that was the only one that was different. So Michael Massey. In his 2018 year as Charlie Whiting's understudy, the safety car was deployed 15 times. Five of those 15 times were there were lapped cars. Each of those five times, all lapped cars were released and the mandatory safety car lap performed. The German 2018 Grand Prix, the safety car was kept out for two laps beyond the lap of release of lapped cars, witnessed by FIA steward Felix Holter. That was witnessed by Felix Holter, the FIA steward, witnessing the safety car stay on track for two laps beyond the, lap, the release of lapped cars. As race director, Massey himself deployed the safety car 52 times. I'm going to go through them. 14 of those 52 times. There were lapped cars. 13 of the 14 times all lapped cars were released and the mandatory safety car lap performed. Four times, which was Spain 2019, Brazil 2019, Eiffel 2020, Sakir 2020, the safety car was kept out for two laps beyond the lap of release of lapped cars. This was witnessed by FIA stewards. Derek Warwick and Gary Connolly, who were stewards at those events, and that will be proven too. Halter was steward at the German event in 2018. They witnessed this happening. So, in his four years of experience as being part of FIA race control, the safety car was deployed 67 times. 19 of those 67 times. 28% of the deployments, there were lapped cars. 18 of those 19 times, all lapped cars were released and the mandatory safety car lap was performed. The one difference was Abu Dhabi. This is not just Michael Massey that's witnessed this. This is the entire personnel in F. I A race control and when you see the visuals of what it looks like you will see you do not make this mistake five of those 19 times 
Germany 2018, Spain 2019, Brazil 2019, Eiffel 2020, Secure 2020, which is 26% of the lapped car safety car situations, the safety car was kept out for two laps beyond the lap of release of lapped cars. Witnessed by FIA stewards, Derek Warwick, Gary Connolly, Felix Holter. 26% of the time is not getting the lapped cars out of the way. Stay tuned, you will see the relevance of this. 52 times that Massey deployed the safety car. 52 times as race director, Massey deployed the safety car. This is what happened. His first deployment in his first ever race. I'm going to actually just skim by this picture and come back to it because you need to know what you're looking at. That's what track of you looked like at the end of that race. But we'll go back to we'll go we'll come back to that in three slides time, four slides time. Number two, this is when lapped cars had so he did the unlapping process of this. The Spanish Grand Prix 2019. This was at the end of lap 52. Lewis Hamilton is leading the race. This is the line of competitors. They are all in the correct race order, one behind the other, with all competitors stacked nose to tail. First, down to the last remaining competitor, which is Robert Kubica in 18th position. The 2019 Monaco Grand Prix, the end of lap 14 of 78. Lewis Hamilton is in the lead. Charles Leclerc is right at the back of the field. All of the competitors are in the correct race order. One behind the other, stacked up, ready to take the restart. Approximately gaps of between half a second and a second between every competitor. That's how you restart an event after a safety car situation. British Grand Prix 2019, lap 23 of 52. Hamilton in the lead. Competitors, one behind the other, in the correct race order, stacked up. First, down to 17th, in the correct race order. Let's go back to the first time Massey deployed the safety car. The Bahrain Grand Prix. His first Grand Prix, is it, was it, the, well maybe, no it wasn't, sorry. I'm lying there because his first one was Australia. But his first deployment. Poor Michael Massey is so inexperienced, he's so under pressure, he might panic and get it wrong. What happened here? That 57 of 57. This is as they, as they cross the line at the end of lap 57 of 57. So what does that mean? It means it's a safety car finish. What's going on with the cars? Lewis Hamilton is leading the race. The white dot behind Lewis Hamilton's dot is not second place. That's Robert Kubica. He's in 16th. Behind Kubica is the blue dot of Daniel Kvyat. He's in 12th. Then it's that beige dot of Kevin Magnussen. He's in 13th. What's going on? Well, if you've got 12th and 13th behind 16th, it means that 12th and 13th have already lapped 16th, and this is they'd be lapping him again. What are these cars around the track? What position is Lando Norris in? Lando Norris, he, he's at between turns 10 and 11 on that straight. Lando Norris is in 6th. Are the cars lined up one behind the other in the correct race order? No, they're not. They're fragmented. The order is not sorted. It couldn't be done in time. And the race ends behind the safety car. Michael Massey did not panic. The race ended behind the safety car. That is the rules of the sport. So, 2019 German Grand Prix. The restart. Lewis Hamilton leading all the way down to Danny Kvyat at the back. Correct race order, one behind the other. 
German Grand Prix 2019. This is also where cars were released after being lapped. Now, they were given the one mandatory safety car lap. The three cars that you see adrift here, Russell, Stroll and Kubica, are actually closer to Grosjean, the last car in that safety car train, than they were prior to the incident. So they still gained time. They were not left further behind Grosjean in 13th than they previously were. Now, there can be a change of positions of competitors due to pit strategy. So it may not have been Grosjean in that position. But relative to the competitors that they were previously chasing, they are not now further behind. They have been given the one mandatory lap with which to catch the back of the pack. They didn't quite do it, but they're not left far further behind than they originally were. And that is the parameters that they will be looking at at race control to determine whether they're going to start the race again or whether they're going to give it another lap. That is going to be a consideration. But look at the race resumption. Max Verstappen is leading. They're nose to tail for the first 13 places in the correct race order. And the other three cars that are still making it around the track, they are not disadvantaged by the process in as much that they have still gained time on the cars that they were previously uh, trying to catch. Again, 2019 German Grand Prix. The restart. Max Verstappen leading. Lance Stroll, the last remaining competitor. Nose to tail. Correct race order. This is the picture of what race control is seeing at every safety car restart. This is the picture of what it looks like after every safety car restart. Sometimes this is accomplished after just one lap. Sometimes Massey makes the safety car stay on track for two laps with which to accomplish these restart conditions. 29 German Grand Prix again. This is the restart conditions. This time it's Max Verstappen in front. This time it's Lewis Hamilton at the back trying to catch the rest of the safety car snake. 2019 Belgian Grand Prix. What did I make a note? Oh, I'll be doing a video about that. Nose to tail. Charles Leclerc in the lead. Kimi Raikkonen, the last remaining competitor. Nose to tail. Ready to take the restart in the correct order. Lapped cars again. The tenth time he supplied the, the safety car. Singapore. Sainz is adrift, but again, he gained time from how far back he was prior to the incident. So you can see the cars, Vettel leading, nose to tail, all the way down to Roman Grosjean at the end of that set of cars. Carlos Sainz is the last running competitor. He was given the lap with which to catch the back of the pack. He is there. Being there, he is closer to Grosjean than he previously was prior to this incident, or certainly closer to 18th prior, prior than he was to the incident. 2019 Singapore Grand Prix. This is the restart again. Science has gained places. So had he not have actually been left so far behind first time round, where would he actually be at this stage of the race? So should we really be leaving a driver that far disadvantaged? 29 Singapore Grand Prix again. This is how they restarted again. Nose to tail. Science has gained further ground. 2019 Russian Grand Prix. Nose to tail. Vettel in the lead. Daniel Ricciardo at the end. One behind the other. Correct race order. This is what track of view looks like at a safety car restart. It looks like this every single time there are 10 people in fia race control looking at screens looking at seeing this picture of where the cars are on the gps tracking system to acknowledge when the cut the race is going to resume 2019 russian grand prix this is what it is again hamilton in the lead kimi Raikkonen, the last remaining competitor the correct race order 2019 Brazilian Grand Prix. Now, again, they let the lapped cars go. They let them have two laps with which to catch the back of the pack. 
Robert Kubica had been lapped twice. They don't let him unlap twice. So this is what it looked like. Race resumption. Hamilton in the lead. All the way back to the two Williams. Now, you'll see Russell as the last remaining competitor. Okay? But that is the only anomaly you'll see in this incident. is because Kubica had been lapped twice. And so, although he was ahead of Russell, he was given one lap back. And every other car was released for that one lap and given the two laps with which to capture the back of the pack. But that is why you see the order switch between Russell and Kubica because Kubica had been lapped twice. And actually Russell was close to lapping him for the second time, but not quite there. 2019 Brazilian Grand Prix. This is the safety car incident later on in that race when the two Ferraris cra crashed. This is a resumption. Max Verstappen down to... Roman Grosjean and Robert Kubica. Again, Kubica having been already a lap down and not allowed to unlap from that because he'd previously been two laps down, wasn't released at this safety car incident because that decision had already been made at the first safety car situation. Hence, that's why he's located there in that running order. But he will be given blue flags for Grosjean to overtake him. That's another part of the special case on the grounds of a competitor being two laps down. Very rare. The 2020 Austrian Grand Prix. Again, lapped cars. Massey would have... Uh, sorry, Austrian Grand Prix. Lapped cars, six, sorry. So, he's done the mandatory unlapping procedure. Latifi is the one that's cut adrift. And... Again, is closer to the previous competitors than he previously was. He's not been left disadvantaged compared to his race position prior to the incident. Nose to tail, correct race order. Austrian Grand Prix 2020. Correct race order, nose to tail. Bottas at the front, Latifi at the back. Look at the gaps between the competitors. Look at the picture that you're seeing. Look at the picture that race control know. A straight Austrian Grand Prix again. Bottas in the lead. This time it's Giovinazzi as the final remaining competitor. Nose to tail. Taking the restart. Styrian Grand Prix. Hamilton in the lead. Leclerc catching the back of the pack for the restart. Nose to tail. Correct race order. British Grand Prix. Hamilton in the lead. Latifi, the last remaining competitor. Nose to tail. Correct race order. British Grand Prix. Hamilton in the lead. Latifi at the back. Nose to tail. Correct race order. Belgian Grand Prix. This wasn't um, a wet day in Spa, by the way, where they don't have to release the lapped cars and they don't have to make them because... In 10 years, that has never happened, despite Martin Brundle gaslighting and lying about that fake scenario. Hamilton in the lead. It is actually Latifi at the back, but these dots switch positions when the GPS signal is um, so is uh, kind of it gets it conflicts. But actually, Latifi is the last remaining competitor there. And you, when you actually play this round on track of you, it's, it's pausing at exactly the right moment where it shows the blue dot last. But they're nose to tail in the correct race order. Italian Grand Prix. Hamilton in the lead. Albon, the last remaining competitor. Nose to tail in the correct race order. This is what race control C. Ten personnel at least in F. IA race control. Four stewards with screens in the stewards office with the knowledge that this is how races are resumed after a safety incident. This is whether there's been lapped cars or not. Whether there's no been no unlapping required, they just form up like this. When there's been lapped cars in situ, the lapped cars are released. They're given at least one lap, sometimes two, to make it around to the back of the pack. 
And this is the restart condition. Italian Grand Prix again. This one was a grid restart. So this was a red flag and a standing reef restart. The competitors are in the correct race order. As you see a start to the car in the correct race order. Tuscan Grand Prix. Valtteri Bottas at the front. Vettel, the last remaining competitor. Tuscan Grand Prix. Red flag and a standing restart. Bottas down to the last remaining competitor, which is Grosjean in the correct race order. Tuscan. This is where cars were released because they'd been lapped. Okay. The car, it, the, the, the race is red flagged. The safety car is deployed. The race is red flagged. Prior to restarting the race, the lapped cars are released. They are sent around the track so that they become on the same lap as every other competitor. The correct race order is there first down to the last remaining competitor. And then the race is restarted. Russian Grand Prix. This is the 29th deployment. Are you spotting a pattern here? This is the 29th deployment that Massey has done. Hamilton in the lead. Norris, the final running competitor. Nose to tail in the correct race order. This is how they go racing again. Eiffel Grand Prix 2020. Nose to tail. This is how they go racing again. This is where, is this the first, I don't know, let's have a look. Now Eiffel, this is where they were given two laps of the track with which to catch the back of the pack. I will show you which steward knew about this event. Correct race order, Hamilton at the front, Kvyat at the back, nose to tail, correct race order. Amelia Romagna, again, lapped cars, released, allowed to catch the back of the pack, Hamilton at the front. Stroll at the back, nose to tail, correct race order. Bahrain, 2020. Hamilton at the front, Magnussen at the back, correct race order. First, down to 18th, in the correct order, nose to tail. This is what it looks like every time. Bahrain, let's have a look at this picture. Hamilton in the lead. They're stopping in second, but we've got a red dot in between Hamilton and Verstappen. A red dot in between first and second. Third is Alex Albon. In between Verstappen's blue dot and Alex Albon's blue dot, there's a white dot of Daniel Kvyat. There's a blue dot of George Russell. There's a red dot of Sebastian Vettel. Back up at turn 13, we've got yellow dots of Daniel Ricciardo. We've got Valtteri Bottas, we've got Esteban Ocon, there's a, uh, is it Magnussen's grey dot as well? They're in position 7th, 8th, 9th, 17th. Is that nose to tail in the correct race order? No, it's not. Safety car finish. No time to unlap. No time to get the correct restart conditions. Michael Massey did a safety car finish at the 2019 Bahrain Grand Prix. His first safety car deployment. Michael Massey has done a safety car finish at the 2020 Grand Prix of Bahrain. His first. Who wears a number one on their car? His 33rd deployment. Also a safety car finish. Strange, but certain numbers crop up at certain times. 2020 Sakia Grand Prix. Russell in the lead. The last remaining competitor, Perez. The resumption, nose to tail, correct race order. This is where the cars have been lapped and were released. Given two laps with which to catch the back of the pack, I will show you who was... It might be this way, but it might be another one. We'll come to that. This is the restart conditions. Jack Aitken, 
has finally made it around to the back of the pack. Perez leading it. Nose to tail. Correct race order. This is how they go racing again after every safety car incident. This is the only way you can go racing in the correct race order. Competitors nose to tail. 2020 Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. Max Verstappen in the lead. Fittipaldi, 19th. Catching up with 18th Latifi. Just about to go racing. Nose to tail. Correct race order. Note we've not got a bunch of cars at turn 7 here. Bahrain, 2021. There we go. Max Verstappen leading. Mick Schumacher. Again, it's one of them situations where the GPS dots flick between Perez and Schumacher. It's just at the point in time where I paused it. It just has flicked to white. Correct race order, nose to tail of those competitors. Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. This is Max Verstappen leading. This is uh, Sebastian Vettel bringing up the rear of the pack. But Mick Schumacher is cast adrift back between turns 9 and turns 10. He's been given the chance of unlapping but he was that far behind and he pitted late in that safety car period leaving him that far behind in terms of the time and able to, to um, get around so on the release lap most of the cars released were released and off they went Mick Schumacher was only released late on that lap because of how far behind he was but he was still given that lap he only got that far around but he's been given the chance. And he lost the time due to him pitting where he did. But he's disadvantaged himself. His team has disadvantaged him. Therefore, that's not race control's fault. But the remaining competitors, nose to tail, correct race order. Emilia Romagna, when the cars were lapped, this is where Lewis Hamilton spun out, had to replace his nose cone. This is where Bottas and George Russell crashed. Red flag in the race. Prior to resumption, all of the cars that had been lapped were sent off around the track. They were released so that they were on the same lead lap as the leaders. And then the race was resumed in the correct race order. All competitors, nose to tail. There they are, Verstappen leading all the way down to Mazepin at the back. Hamilton wasn't the only person that benefited. Look at the Alpha Tauris, Yuki Tsunoda, Pierre Gasly. Wasn't just Mercedes and Hamilton that gained a big benefit. The Red Bull B team gained a benefit there too. Portuguese Grand Prix. Restart after safety car. Correct race order. Bottas down to Mazepin. Spanish Grand Prix. 21. Giovinazzi was 35 seconds stationary in the pits. Hence, he's not quite made it round to the back of the pack. The rest of the pack. Verstappen is leading. Down to Latifi. In the correct race order before they go restarting. Azerbaijan, there were lapped cars that were released. Mick Schumacher pitted late and Mazepin pitted after he was released. So you look at Verstappen down to um, Russell. Correct race order, nose to tail. The two Hasses have been left adrift because Mick Schumacher put, uh, once again pitted late in that safety car situation, which meant he was so far back when he was given the order to release, he didn't actually make it past the safety car till very late in the lap, meaning that normally they get a lap and a half with which to catch the back of the track, the pack if they're released early enough, but he didn't make it past the uh, leader and the safety car till very late. And Mazepin, he was released but then pitted. So rather than be using that time to make it around to the back of the pack, he spent some of that time in the pits and then got back on track before that safety car train. And then he only got to where he is now. That's his fault. That's his team's choice. Race control did the mandatory procedure. They've disadvantaged him themselves. 43rd time, Azerbaijan. This is where uh, the Stappen crashed due to the puncture. The safety car was deployed and then they red flagged it. What they did was at that stage, Mazepin had become lapped. They sent Mazepin out first to unlap. Then they sent all the cars around with the safety car to reform the grid. 
You see Russell at the back because Russell has peeled off and gone into the pits to retire. Hence, you see the blue dot there, but he's actually out of the race now. Austrian Grand Prix, 2021. Verstappen leading. Giovinazzi right at the back. Nose to tail. Correct race order. This is what you see every time. The tiny anomalies you see, there are reasons. But the generality is this is what you know consists of a race restart after a safety car situation. Every single time you resume racing, you get this situation, this pattern. This is what track of you looks like. British Grand Prix, 2021. Leclerc is at the front there. Perez is at the back. Nose to tail. Correct race order. Hungarian Grand Prix. Let's have a look at this one. There he is. Lewis Hamilton on his own because everybody else peeled off. This is after Bottas went bowling. They did the restart. And then when they reformed the grid, Hamilton was the only one left on the grid and all the other competitors went into the pits. They were in the correct race order. Nose to tail, they chose the pit. This is how the race restarted on track of view. Hamilton was the only one on track. Belgian Grand Prix. This is how the race restarted after the safety car had peeled off oh that never happened because they never raced so yeah there was never a point in time where them cars were enabled to start racing without the safety car just leading them around parading so it wasn't a race so that's what you saw in belgium but they'll tell you that you saw a race that day just because somebody told you you saw a race, you need to use your own brain and decide whether you saw a race or not. The FIA tell you that what you saw constitutes a race. A primary school aged child will tell you that that's not a race when they're not allowed to overtake, when they're just made to line up one behind the other and made to walk back to the classroom in single file. Nobody's racing there. The Italian Grand Prix, 2021. Ricky, well, this is after Max Lent ended up on Lewis's head. Ricardo leading the race. Mazepin at the back of the field. Correct race order. Nose to tail. There they are. That's what it looks like. Mexican Grand Prix, 2021. Verstappen leading. All the way down to Daniel Ricardo at the back. Nose to tail, correct race order. Brazilian Grand Prix, 2021. Verstappen leading. Norris at the back, correct race order. Nose to tail. Saudi Grand Prix, after a red flag. Verstappen leading. This is not the uh, negotiated uh, restart after Verstappen had... This is the one where Verstappen sends it into that first corner, makes a dangerous return to track, which Lewis Hamilton has to avoid, and Hamilton loses a place in, in the process. Uh, and then Red Bull get to negotiate with the race directors to where Max starts, as opposed to getting a penalty for an unsafe re-entry onto track, causing a competitor to lose a space. Correct race order, nose to tail. Abu Dhabi. The, the reason I didn't include that second restart is because it was an immediate red flag. It, the safety car was never deployed after that uh, that second, uh, that first red flag and, and restart. It was an immediate red flag and just was another restart. Abu Dhabi. Uh, 20, what have I put? 57 of uh, 78. It's 57 of 58. Mistake on my part. We all make a human error. But we can correct it. We can put our hands up. We can own up when we get something wrong. It's quite easy. Quite easy to say, look, what you're seeing there is wrong. I need to explain that it's wrong. And I need to own up for my what I did wrong there. So it's, it's, it's quite easy, isn't it? it? You know, I'm not very good. I apologise, OK? I got it wrong. But I can, I can go back and I can correct that. And I can replace this slide with one which says lap 57 of 58, OK? And I can rectify the situation. 
this was how the race resumed on at the end of lap 57 of lap 58 of Abu Dhabi. Now I'm just going to track this back a couple of seconds just so that you can see where the dots are. You've got Lewis Hamilton in first. You've got Max Verstappen in second. Behind Max Verstappen, you have Daniel Ricciardo in 12th. Lance Stroll in 13th. Then you've got Carlos Sainz in 3rd. Then you've got Valtteri Bottas in 4th. Then you've got Mick Schumacher in 14th. Then you've got Pierre, sorry, Yuki Tsunoda in 5th. Then you've got Pierre Gasly in 6th. At turn 5 of the track, once we go forward, oops, there is Lando Norris in 7th position. All that distance behind Pierre Gasly. Prior to Latifi crashing, Lando Norris was less than 12 seconds behind Pierre Gasly. Lando Norris was closer to Pierre Gasly than Max Verstappen was to Lewis Hamilton. You cannot allow a safety incident to advantage Verstappen like that, to get him right behind Hamilton, and disadvantage Norris like this, putting him this far behind Gasly. That is the purpose of the rules. That is the purpose of the rules that the FIA has educated you about, that has told you about, that has explained. This is what Sky Sports have told you. No, they haven't, have they? It's funny that, isn't it? No media has ever told you this. Why is that? It's because they are all covering up the fix. They're all parroting the narrative. They are all lying to you. Out at turn five, we have Norris, seventh, Alonso, eighth, Ocon, ninth, Leclerc, tenth, Vettel, eleventh. Are these competitors nose to tail in the correct race order? Of course they're not. This is not a valid restart. They have not achieved valid restart conditions. You cannot go racing like this. What you've done, you've fixed it. You've manufactured it just to get those cars out of the way of Verstappen, to set it up for him, knowing that he's on fresh soft tyres, which are two to three seconds a lap faster than old hard tyres. You fixed it. You, you, you know what you did. You know the rules. You know what is how to restart races. This time, you manufactured this. You manipulated it just for Max Verstappen. Just for that event to, do, to, to happen the way it happened. Before it happened, F1 TV were convincing you it was going to happen with what they were showing you. They did not show you how long the clear-up operation was taking. They were interjecting with messages to suggest that the race was going to restart even after the end of lap 56, where we knew at the end of lap 56, with lapped cars not released, it had to be a safety car finish. F1 TV chose to do that. Sky Sports F1 were lying about the rules of the sport, as they have done for 10 years, which Brundle has lied at each of them Grand Prix that I've evidenced about the rules of the sport, apart from when the Red Bull stable is advantaged by that. He doesn't say a lot then. I'll evidence that too. OK, but he's lied about the rules of the sport, but they he lied further about the rules of the sport in Abu Dhabi to condition you that it was going to be possible for racing to resume. Because even at the start of lap 57, Brundle says, because I think the safety car will come at the end of this lap and we will get one racing lap. And at that stage, the lapped cars hadn't even been released. Why would you think that, Brundle? Why would you think that? What did you know? Because there is nowhere in the regulations that permit that. You've been conditioned to believe that it's possible to resume racing with lapped cars in situ. It is not. It's not in the rules. The wording of the rules is if it is safe to do so, which means if it is not safe to release the lapped cars, it certainly isn't safe to go racing. It certainly isn't safe to go racing. So it means you continue lapping behind the safety car until it is safe. 
and if that their number of laps sorry if their number of laps run out the race finishes behind the safety car that's the way it works this was manufactured this was manufactured by 10 people in race control who know what a valid restart looks like this was confirmed by four stewards who knew what a valid race start restart looked like this was set up for you to be conditioned by f1 tv by sky sports f1 this is systematic corruption you get a report by the fia which is a pack of lies with absolutely no validity to them whatsoever that just seek to validate this happening this is systematic corruption this is fraud this is an absolute fraud they dress it up as a mistake an error it is an absolute fraud people lost money on this people who bet on the event lost money a man was robbed of his valid accomplishment. People who have said this is wrong have been wrongfully abused for standing up for what is right. Kids have been brought up in this world to believe that this is authentic, to believe you can do this to people, to believe you can fuck over a human being like that and and. Oh, yeah, it's all OK. It's just a mistake. It's just in the rules. It, it, it's a bit too complicated for you to understand. Um, y yeah, don't worry. It's all the, the rules are like a legal document. It's 100 pages thick. Uh, you won't get it. Don't worry about that. We'll have to get the lawyers involved for that. It's a lie. It is simple. It is a lie. It is conditioning the minds of human beings and is dangerous. So to recap, 2012 Austrian Grand Prix, the re-adoption of the unlapping, grand, uh, of unlapping of lap cars. Between Austria and Abu Dhabi, 10 full seasons of racing under those rules. Abu Dhabi was the 199th Grand Prix, consecutive Grand Prix under those rules. There were, during those 199 Grand Prix, 148 safety car deployments, 49 of which required the unlapping of lapped cars. This is not a rare occurrence. This is that list again of those events in which the cars were unlapped. And I've given you, given you the anomalies and I've given you the reasons for them anomalies. Them reasons did not apply at all at Abu Dhabi 2021. You did not see a split in the traffic at them events. I don't have track of you for them events. It's not on F1 TV. But what you see is the, the competitors nose to tail in the correct race order. But for the competitor that didn't lap due to the reasons given. Now, let's go back to these. Michael Massey's first safety car deployment, which ended up in a safety car finish. FIA steward, who has been a steward since 1989. Gary Connolly was a steward at that event. This is what track of you look like. You can see they are not nose to tail in the correct race order. Correct resumption conditions could not be achieved. Hence, it was a safety car finish. 2020 Bahrain Grand Prix. Lap 57. Safety car finish. Gary Connolly, FIA steward. FIA steward since 1989 was a steward at that Grand Prix. This is what track of you look like. They are not nose to tail. They're not in the correct race order. Back there at turn 13, you've got Daniel Ricciardo in seventh place. Behind Lewis Hamilton, you've got the red car of, uh, it's actually Charles Leclerc. And he's in 10th. You've got first, you've got 10th. 
That is not the correct race order. You cannot resume racing like this. Hence, it's a safety car finish. Gary Connolly witnessed both events. He was a steward at both of them events. Abu Dhabi. I've put 78 there again. God knows what I was doing with that slide. Gary Connolly was the FI, one of the FIA stewards at that event. This is what you saw, Gary Connolly. This is what you saw. Does that not remind you of Bahrain 2019? Does that not remind you of Bahrain 2020? Does it not look like a standard safety car restart where all the competitors are one behind the other in the correct race order, nose to tail? So, the four FIA stewards in Abu Dhabi, Gary Connolly, Derek Warwick, Felix Holter, Mohammed Al-Hashmi. Now, Mohammed Al-Hashmi is a local steward from the country that is staging the Grand Prix. So, relatively speaking, I'm, I'm keeping him out of it. This is the FIA document detailing who the stewards are for the event. Gary Connolly, Derek Warwick, Felix Holter. This is the bios of each of them stewards. This, I couldn't find it for the actual Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, although they should have produced something like this. Um, the race that this one is from is from the 2021 Belgian Parade, where it's the same three stewards that were in attendance to tell everybody that we'd all seen a race at 2021 in Belgium. So this is the bios of them three stewards. At the 2018 German Grand Prix, the safety car remained on track for two laps beyond the lap that the cars were released. Felix Holter was a steward at that event. There it is. Felix Holter, a steward at that event. And they're adjudicating here on um, Carlos Sainz overtaking a car under the safety car. And the decision was that Carlos Sainz got a 10 second time penalty and two penalty points awarded. Hmm. Overtaking a car during a safety car period. At the 2019 Spanish Grand Prix, the safety car remained on track for two laps beyond the lap that cars were released. Gary Connolly was a steward at that event. There it is, 2019. Spanish Grand Prix. Lando Norris is being investigated for a crash there. Gary Connolly was a steward, as listed. Now, this is the uh, Spanish the tracker view of the Spanish Grand Prix. This I couldn't get it for 2018. The tracker view does not is not available on F1 TV for 2018. But this is 2019. This is Hamilton crossing the line at the end of the lap on which lapped cars were released. The released cars are over there between turns five, going all the way back to about turn two. So the yellow dots and the white dots over at the top left-hand corner of the screen. They're the released cars. This is So Hamilton is just about to start the one mandatory safety car lap. This is Hamilton finishing that mandatory state safety car lap. So they could go racing. Look at the released cars. Okay, so you've got, I believe it's Albon at turn 13, going back to Giovinazzi, um, the burgundy dot. Uh, he's uh, kind of coming up to turn 10. They could go racing in accordance with the rules of the sport, the way they're written. Does Massey go racing? No, he doesn't. He keeps them lapping behind the safety car. And this is the following lap when they do go racing. What has been achieved? Now again, what was achieved a few seconds before this is they were bunched up more nose to tail. Obviously the leader will hit the accelerator and that will cause them to string out a little bit as you get that effect of the cars spreading out from each other, each other as they all begin to accelerate. Hence the gaps look bigger at the, at the front of the field. But what was achieved is nose to tail in the correct race order Similar gaps between all cars. Sporting fairness. Who witnessed that? Gary Connolly. Gary Connolly witnessed that. Witnessed the, the additional lap 
given to the competitors behind the safety car. You understand the reason for that? 2020 Eiffel Grand Prix. Safety car remained on track for two laps beyond the lap that the lap cars were released. Derek Warwick was a steward at that event. There we are. What's he investigating here? Causing a collision. So, Alex Albon. Um, stewards have received a report from the race director and have considered the following and determined. Alex Albon um, causing a collision with car 26 after turn 14. Um, involved in an incident. What, what, let's have a look. Car 26 missed the apex and rejoined the track. After that, uh, car 23 passed car 26 and moved to the left and clipped the front wing. This, call, this contact forced car 26 into the pits. Okay, so what did Alex Albon get? He got a five-second time penalty, two penalty points imposed. So if you cause a collision or run another car off the track, do you get a time penalty and penalty points on your licence? You agreed to that, Derek Warwick. You, you judged that. This was um, the Eiffel Grand Prix. This was the moment in time where Daniel Kvyat just passes the safety car just as it's about to start a lap. So he just gets by in time. And this is the lap which, which they're then given. Uh, the leader of the race is the, um, the dot of Hamilton. One lap later, Hamilton's about to then start the next lap, they've been given that lap with which to catch the back of the pack. Do they go racing? No, they don't. Massey keeps them going behind the safety car until they look like this, and then they do go racing. Cars are released. They do the mandatory safety car lap. Massey keeps that safety car out on track until this situation is achieved, and then we go racing again. Derek Warwick witnessed that. He was steward at that event. What is the purpose of Massey keeping them cars lapping behind the, the safety car? It's so that these release cars are not left like that. That is achieved before we go racing. The same situation that is achieved for every safety car restart. 2020 Secure Grand Prix. Once again, Gary Connolly is the steward for this event. The safety car remained on track for two laps beyond the lap that the cars were released. Gary Connolly, what's he adjudicating here? Uh, heard from a driver considering the following. Charles Leclerc this time collided with car 11 at turn 14, forcing car 33 to take avoiding action, which resulted in car 33 hitting a barrier. As Lewis Hamilton ever had to take avoiding action, but has it been good enough to not hit a barrier? Because I think he had to take avoiding action in Spain, um, 2021. He had to take avoiding action in Monza at a chicane. Not the one that Max ended up on his head, but earlier in the race he had to take avoiding action in Monza. He had to take avoiding action at the Emilia, Ram Emilia Romagna Grand Prix at Imola. Had to take avoiding action there. He had to take avoiding action in Brazil when he got run out of off the track. He had to take avoiding action in Saudi where again he got ran off the track by Verstappen, but kept himself in the race by taking avoiding action. So, what did Charles Leclerc get? A drop of three grip positions for the next race. Two penalty points imposed on his licence. Five times, Max Verstappen made Lewis Hamilton have to take avoiding action at least five times in the 2021 season. How many penalty points did Max Verstappen get? Gary Connolly, steward at the 2020 Sakir Grand Prix. Let's see what track of you looks like. So, this is the point in time where the last lapped car overtakes the leader. Jack Aitken, the blue dot, just been released. You've then got the start of the following lap. Look at Jack Aitken at turn four. Is he out of the way of the race between the leaders? Yes, he is. Do we go racing? No, we don't. This is when we go racing, the following lap. You'd think that Red Bull would remember this incident. 
This was the season before they signed Sergio Perez, the driver that they'd have been looking at to recruit. He's won a race. You'd think you'd pay special attention to his performance in this race and what was taking place during this race, wouldn't you? You can have a read of Gary Connolly's bio. But FIA steward and observer since 1989. At 2021. That's 32 years of experience. Oops. So, since the introduction of the present rules, Gary Connolly witnessed the 2012, was a steward at the 2012. This is, this is a minimum. This is only the, the ones which I determined that the unlapping procedure was done. So he'd been a steward at many more than this. But this is just the unlapping procedure of lapped cars. He was a steward at the 2012 Brazilian Grand Prix. OK, there were two incidents, two laps to unlap. Safety car finish as well. So one was the safety car finish, which required the unlapping of lapped cars. And they, the race director, Charlie Whiting, kept the, the, the uh, safety car on track for two additional laps to allow that. And then the race finished behind the safety car. That was a title decider. Gary Connolly was a steward at that event. 2013 career. Cars were allowed to unlap after a safety car incident and given two laps with the, of the track with which to unlap. 2015, well, now we know the regulations were amended to try and shorten the process, but they were given one lap. Singapore, Austria, 2016, 2018, Azerbaijan. So it was a elongated safety car period due to a crash during that unlapping process, but he was a steward there. Even with the amended regulations, we're seeing the race director give two laps with which. There's a reason. There's a reason, and that is to achieve sporting fairness. The fundamental underlying principle of the rule itself. 2019, Spain, two laps to unlap. Gary Connolly was a steward at that event. 2020, Tuscan Grand Prix. Gary Connolly was a steward at that event. 2020, Sakir Grand Prix. Again, Michael Massey gives the competitors two laps. He keeps the safety car on track for two laps beyond the lap that they were released on with which for them to catch the back of the pack. Gary Connolly was a steward at that event. In 2021, Connolly was a steward at the Belgian, Dutch, Italian, Russian, Qatari, Saudi Arabian and Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. 32 years experience has seen all this take place. Somehow got it wrong in Abu Dhabi when he is asked to adjudicate on the Mercedes appeal. Derek Warwick, former F1 driver, the great white hope himself, owns a Honda car dealership on the island of Jersey. Vice President of the FIA Drivers Commission and past president of the British Racing Drivers Club, who I contacted to say... How are you? What are you doing about the fact that a British driver has been robbed of becoming an eight time world champion? No response from the British Racing Drivers Club. Derek Warwick was a steward at the 2013 Singapore. There's probably more. This is all the data I can find at the moment, but there is probably more. 2013 Singapore Grand Prix, where the race director kept the car, the safety car on track for two laps beyond the lap of release of the lapped cars with which for them to catch the back of the pack 2014 Bahrain he did the same 2014 Monaco he did the same Derek Warwick is a steward at these events seeing this take place a steward at the 2017 Monaco Grand Prix where lapped cars are given at least one lap Germany 2019 where again lapped cars are given a further lap by the safety car with which to catch the back of the pack i.e. in accordance with the rules, in accordance with every situation that we've seen. 2020 Eiffel Grand Prix, where Massey gave those lapped cars two laps to make it around to back the back of the pack. Derek Warwick was a steward. In 2021, Warwick was a steward at the Spanish Grand Prix, where Max ran Lewis off track. The Austrian Grand Prix, the Belgian Parade and the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. 
Felix Holter. Now it says in 2018 he became a member of the FIA International Stewards Panel. He was a steward at the 2018 German Grand Prix where Charlie Whiting was race director. Michael Massey was performing the role of deputy, whether he was at that particular event as deputy because he alternated with Scott Alpines. I can't find that out at the moment, but he should have been part of race control for that event. Had he not been, he should have been part of the debrief when you are actually analysing what was good about the weekend, what was not. As a trainee race director, that would be part and parcel of the process. Felix Holter was a steward at that event. Charlie Whiting kept the safety car on track for two laps beyond the le release of the lap cars. Felix Holter witnessed that. In 2021, Holter was a steward at the Belgian Parade, the Turkish, Turkish Grand Prix and at Abu Dhabi. And I say, I'm not going to go into this guy. Um, like I say, he's provided, he's the national steward. So I'm not going to look into his experience. Ultimately, there's a panel of four stewards. Uh, in order for a decision to be made, surely you're going to need a majority. You're going to need three votes for a certain notion for it to carry. So really, uh, you know, this guy's vote is probably not that important. It might be, might not. Don't know how whether it's a voting system or what. But we've got three people that we can prove and evidence had knowledge of how things need to be. 199. Now, what's 199? That's the number of Grand Prix since the introduction of these unlapping safety car rules, which began for the 2012 season. Who knows about 199? These guys, these guys have been involved in all of them Grand Prix. They were at Red Bull in their present role since well, well before that. They've contested them 199 Grand Prix and never once contested what the purpose of the safety car rules are. They've never once contested that any doesn't mean all. They've never once contested that, oh, it's to get them out of the way. They don't need to go all the way around the track and, uh, and then we've got a motor race on our hands. So that prior to Abu Dhabi, they'd all been party to 198 Grand Prix contested under these set of rules and regulations. They will have observed and understood the 147 safety car deployments and restarts. This team leaves no stone unturned when it comes to strategy. They are the best strategically out of all the F1 teams. We all know that. They sometimes know things before they even happen. And I can prove some of that too. They'll have witnessed and understood the 49 safety car situations which required the unlapping of lapped cars. And just one of the previous 48 situations which occurred since 2012 where the safety car was deployed was a single lap car not released uh, was 2017. Pascal Verlaine, Verlaine had been lapped by the entire field and became lapped twice again by the leaders during the safety car due to his team pitting him late in the safety car period, making him ineligible. So... The anomalies, there are reasons for the anomalies. Them reasons do not apply in Abu Dhabi in the slightest. Jonathan Wheatley gets onto Massey. Obviously, those lap cars, you don't need to let them go right away around and let them catch up with the back of the pack. Understood. Understood. That's the code word, isn't it? You just need to let them go and then we've got a motor race on our hands. Why did some um, broadcasters actually uh, play that message to the world? Is that part of the rules of the sport? As broadcasters, you know and you understand the sport and you also know that um, if things are being said which aren't in accordance with the rules, you just dismiss them. Why would you broadcast people saying stuff that's irrelevant and not even possible? You know, if, if you've got a, would a football commentator or pundit start lying about the rules of the sport, saying, oh, yeah, the defender can just kick that back to the goalkeeper and he can pick it up. Um, I don't think it's mandatory for, for um, that the goalkeeper's not allowed to pick that up. I think that's, that's fine. Well, yeah, that's fine. It, it was like that back in the 1980s. But they changed that rule and you can't do that. So what's the relevance of 
playing somebody saying that and surely you'd say no you, you, you're talking shit mate what red bull knew about the safety car in 2019 at the spanish grand prix cars were given two laps to catch the back of the pack beyond the lap of the release now red bull keep an eye on their b team their stable of drivers and they promote them b team drivers to the a team we've seen that promotion of drivers we've seen pierre gasly go between the two teams We've seen Alex Albon go between the two teams. We've seen uh, Daniel Kvyat go between the two teams. We've seen Daniel Ricciardo get promoted from Alpha, uh, Toro Rosso to um, Red Bull. Who, anybody else? Did Max Verstappen start in the uh, Toro Rosso and end up getting promoted to Red Bull? Mm. So um, Christian Horner, Jonathan Wheatley and um, Adrian Newey. They tend to be looking at what the Toro Rosso team is doing as well, don't they? So they kind of understand the impact of this safety car having on both their own team and their B team. At the German Grand Prix in 2019, Albon in a Toro Rosso was running in fourth. Lance Stroll in a racing point was 16th and last and lapped. Stroll is released and finishing fourth ahead of Albon in sixth. Was that getting Stroll out of the way of the race between the leaders? You tell us, Red Bull. You tell us. At the Singapore Grand Prix, Sainz in a McLaren was 19th and last and lapped. Released. He finishes 12th ahead of Daniel Kvyat in a Toro Rosso who finishes 15th. A car released to get him out of the way. Finishes ahead of one of your cars. Russian Grand Prix. Kimi Raikkonen in an Alfa Romeo was 15th and last. Released. Finishes 13th ahead of a Toro Rosso. Is it getting him out of the way? Is he still in the race? They're all still racing, aren't they, Red Bull? They're all still racing. So what you've done, you've put a message to the race director telling the race director to ignore the chances of every other competitor in this race and then we have a motor race on our hands, don't we, Michael? Ignore the chances of every competitor in that race, but for Max Verstappen. And then we have a motor race on our hands, don't we, Michael? That's a breach of the FIA International Sporting Code. That's cheating, Red Bull. That's cheating, Red Bull. Brazilian Grand Prix. Pierre Gasly in a Toro Rosso. Is in sixth place. He is lapped. Daniel Rick uh, Kvyat in a Toro Rosso is in 13th place. He is lapped. Both cars are released. Gasly achieves his first ever podium, coming second in that race and earning 18 championship points. It's a good job they got him out of the way of the race between the leaders, isn't it? It's a good job they got him out of the way of the race between the leaders. Because if he hadn't have done that, he wouldn't have come second and got his 18 points. Or oh, second, is that not one of the leaders? 18 championship points? You'd think you'd pay attention as to how you got them. Danny Kvyat, one point. Albon in the Red Bull was running fourth and finishes 14th. Don't remember that event. Do you remember that event, Red Bull? What Red Bull knew about the safety car in 2020? The Austrian Grand Prix, Nicholas Latifi was in 16th and last and lapped. He was released, he finished 11th. But in that race, Daniel Kvyat was classified 12th, Alex Albon in a Red Bull was classified 13th, and Max Verstappen in a Red Bull was classified 20th. You know, a, a lapped car beat three of the Red Bull stable. Proud day. Tuscan Grand Prix, Raikkonen 12th and last and Grosjean were made to unlap before the standing restart. Raikkonen finishes ninth. Red Bull had packed away after Max had crashed out on lap one. You probably you probably weren't paying attention there because you just focus on Supermax. Eiffel Grand Prix. Two safety car laps after the release of lapped cars. Pierre Gasly was lapped and released. He had pits for fresh softs during that uh, safety car. By pitting, it dropped him down from 7th to 8th position. But by getting onto fresh tyres, he then 
manages to go from 8th to 6th, beating Charles Leclerc's Ferrari, who was on part worn mediums. That's the performance differential. That was worth dropping a place for to put him on faster tyres to eventually get past a car that was beating him in the race prior to that incident. That's what you know, Red Bull. That's what you know. That's how you use that safety car incident. That's what you knew he'd still get on the back of that competitor before it would be restarted. He wasn't going to be disadvantaged, was he? Because you know how the safety car rules work. Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. Vettel, 14th. Lapped and release. Albon, 5th at the time. Vettel finishes 12th. Albon, 15th. 20 sec 29 seconds behind Vettel. Talk us through what's going on. Is it to get them out of the way of the race between the leaders? Or is it that they're still racing in that race too? And anything can happen. Anything can happen, Formula One. You like that line, don't you? Anything can happen. Secure Grand Prix. Two safety car laps after release of lapped cars. Race won by Sergio Perez in a racing point. The guy who Red Bull... We're keeping tabs on for the 2021 season. So you'd have been paying attention to what Massey was doing at the Secure Grand Prix, I'm guessing. What did they know in 2021? Emilia Romagna Grand Prix, the one where Hamilton got lucky with the rules, apparently. Hamilton got lucky there at the Secure Grand uh, the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. But by being allowed to unlap before they restarted. But the Alpha Tauris of Tsunoda and Gasly were also lucky. Tsunoda was 10th and Gasly was 14th and they got to unlap and Gasly ended up finishing 7th, gaining 6 championship points for himself and the team. Tsunoda dropped to 12th. Anything can happen. What Red Bull knew about red flags in 2021? Well, they got to negotiate Max's grid position for the Saudi restart this fight despite the fact that Max was guilty of leaving the circuit, re-entering it in an unsafe manner, causing another driver to have to take evasive action, causing Hamilton to lose a position. Should have been at least a five-second penalty, which had dropped him back to the back of the grid, or a five-place grid drop. Red Bull, OK, we'll accept third for Max, as long as Hamilton is second. Gary Connolly was an FIA steward at that event. Now, the, the, the reason I'm putting these slides up are other YouTubers that I want you to support and subscribe to. You're not hearing the truth. The media has not told you the simple facts that I've just told you. It is clear and blatant corruption. It is systematic corruption. Things that can be evidenced to be categorically wrong. Evidence of what Michael Massey knew about the sport of Formula One, knew about decision making, proven 52 deployments of the safety car. That's some clever cards. That's some clever cards, Michael. 51 of them, he knew what he was doing. He got right, apart from the Belgian parade, I guess. 50 correct deployments. Well, I'm not saying Belgium was incorrect, it just wasn't a race. Every time racing resumes after a safety car situation, the cars are nose to tail in the correct race order, and then we go racing. You don't make an error like that. Ten people in FIA race control at least know the same information as that. They witness those events. They know what the restart conditions have to be before you can go racing again. This all got pinned on Michael Massey. The entire FIA race control, which consists of at least 10 people, is corrupt. They are frauds. They all perpetrated this. Red Bull perpetrated this. F1 TV perpetrated this. Sky Sports F1 perpetrated this. The Four Stewards perpetrated this. The FIA perpetrated this. Every form of media has never exposed any of this. Simple facts. Simple facts of dem demonstrating what everybody knew. 
what everybody abided to, which Red Bull abided by for 198 out of 199 Grand Prix. And on the 199th one, they decide that, oh, we don't have to get them out completely out of the way, and then we've got a motor race on our hands. That, is that not suggesting to a race director to cheat to set up the race for Max Verstappen? Yes, it is. Is that not ignoring the chance of every single competitor in that event just to set it up for Max Verstappen? Yes, it is. That's what Red Bull did. And it all seemed to happen in advance because they're still telling Max Verstappen to keep his tyres warm on lap 57 of that race when it was destined for a safety car finish under the rules of the sport. That happened. That happened. And there are only certain people that are calling it out. Check out Wonderful. Subscribe to Wonderful. He's the biggest channel that is calling out the corruption. He needs more support because his channel seems to be being suppressed. There are channels which are just spinning lies that are growing at a far greater rate than Wonderful. Something is going on that is suppressing his channel. Support his channel. Support FF1. He is calling out the corruption. We are small channels exposing the truth. The only way we expose this bigger is to grow the channels and make this bigger. Get more and more people to see what is truly going on. Subscribe to FF1. Boy 10 Dio, another small channel that is calling out the truth. Subscribe to Boy 10 Dio. We need to grow the platforms to expose this in as many places as possible. Lex F1, another small channel, exposing the truth. We need to grow the platforms to expose this to a big an audience as possible. Subscribe to all of these channels. And this is my channel. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. Please like the video. Please make a comment to, again, hopefully boost the algorithm on YouTube. Um, because people need to see the content. They need to understand this is a crime. The serious fraud office in the UK are refusing to investigate the crime, despite the fact that I've reported it to them. They will not investigate the crime. It is an absolute fraud. It is systematic corruption. There's been an untold amount of damage done. All the parties I've mentioned are involved, and probably more. It is truly disgusting and the damaging effect that this has had, people will not realise, but I will go into that in future videos. Please subscribe to the channels. Please like, please share the content, share it on social media to make more people aware. And this is key.